Hi there, YouTubers, weavers, and anybody else that happens to stumble on this video. Um, I'm working on these prayer shawls, and I realized a little bit ago that when I had been measuring the warp to put on here, there was a knot in the the threads, in one of the, the warp threads, and I didn't catch it. Um, so as I'm weaving, I, I noticed that this one thread wasn't advancing correctly with everything else because that knot was so big that it couldn't go through the reed. So I ended up slicing that knot out, but then I had to splice in an extra piece of warp thread because I just I couldn't tie the, the things together again, obviously, because the knot won't fit. So I spliced in another warp thread, and I've been weaving with that for about a foot. Well, now I'm going to take that one off and sp splice back in the original thread that was wound on as the warp. I hope that makes sense. So what I'll end up with is basically one warp thread that is basically the, f the first part, then about a foot, foot and a half of spliced in part, and then go back to the original thread again with that spliced area in between. So let me show you what I did in the back. This is um, the two threads. One of them is the spliced in one and for tension on that again I'm using an S-hook. So let's go to the back of the loom and take a look at that. Okay, there's the S-hook and yes I'm using paper to separate my layers and a couple of wooden sticks have fallen on the floor and I'm not going to worry about it right this minute. But there's the S-hook hanging there. This is the thread that is the temporary thread and here's the original that was part of the warp. So what I got to do is re-thread this piece through the heddle along with the other one for a little while and through the reed and splice them in up front. So here we are at the front. This is the spliced in thread. I can tell it because I can pull on it like this. And it's just the tension is based on the uh, the S hook. So now I'm going to take this is the thread that should be there and I think there's enough. Yeah, there's enough here. It'll splice in just fine. I'm going to thread so both of these are through the same heddle. And then I'm going to have both of them through the same dent in the reed. And then what I'm going to do is take I'll get a bigger one so you can see it. I'm going to take a, a sewing needle, a darning needle if you will, and I'm just going to put it in here, just down a little bit. Uh, we've got to move you down. There, There's the needle through there. Now I'm going to take this one and put the tension on it and wrap it around like that so it doesn't come loose. And now I'm going to continue to weave and at, for about this much, for two or three inches, I'll end up with two threads doubled up just as if I were splicing in a new piece of weft that's kept, now it's going to be warped. Of course now i got to remember where I was going, where, what, what was I doing last, I think I was there. Okay, so we'll zoom you out just a little bit for now, how about that? We'll go this way. And through like that. Of course we're out of weft thread now, so we're gonna have double splices here. 
change bobbins and continue on. So same situation. I'm ending up now have spliced in a couple of weft threads. So right there we've got two weft threads. I'm not going to worry about those red pieces. I'll cut them off later. But here I've got two warp threads in the same part of the weave. And I want to go a little bit farther so I've got enough strength there to hold them in place. I guess I can pull those heddles back. So we've got about that much that is in place. This thread is pretty well locked in. I'm going to use an old pill bottle to store these needles in. An old pill bottle from a Shopco pharmacy. Shopco went bankrupt about three or four years ago, but I have been using the old bottle. So now I think I'm just going to leave these here for now. I'll cut them off later. But we're going to continue just a little bit farther with uh, where are we? One more time like this. That was the wrong, no, that is the correct one. I'm on the wrong treadle. No wonder it didn't look right. That looks much better.
So we've got so much where it's doubled up. I think that's enough. So now I'm just going to go around the back and figure out which one of these is which. This is the one that is the spliced in piece. This one doesn't pull any more than the rest of these, so it's part of the original warp. So now, yep, this is the one that we don't want. Take it, take and cut this off. Now when I let go of this, it's going to drop and hit the paper on the floor in the back. There you go. So in this area we've got two, but everything is locked nicely in place again. That's how I splice in a warp replacement thread. So now we'll go like this. One. Enough for now. I'll turn the camera back on again in a little while.